Hi everyone, so in the last video I gave a quick recap of how we can build these modular architectures in NavView and send messages between them. However, there was absolutely no code reuse, instead there was a very high level of code duplication. Like we see on the board here, you can see that the code looks very similar, but there was no way of reusing the same code, instead I had to duplicate it many times. The way the Actor Framework solves this issue is to use object-oriented programming. So at this point, if you don't know about object-oriented programming, I highly recommend you check out my YouTube series on Boop, or uh, have a look through the video I did for GDevCon, and I'll put the links for those below. So the way the Actor Framework works is essentially to launch these asynchronous processes when required. So by an asynchronous process we might just mean a simple process like this. So we have a user interface process, a message handling process and a data acquisition process. And by process I actually mean actor. An actor is a process and it's a process with an inbox. So depending on the messages it receives different functions are carried out. Let's have a look at how the Active Framework works at a very high level. So if we go into the data communication uh, palette and to Active Framework and just place down launch root actor, we double click this VI to open it up and then double click the launch actor VI. We can see that we launch an asynchronous process and we're doing that with this function here. The process that we are launching is the actor VI and I won't go into detail for here but at the heart of the actor VI we have the actor core. Now the actor core is essentially a queue driven state machine but it's being made with object oriented design principles. It is also often called the command pattern in other languages. In this video I'm going to show you how we can derive the actor core from a queue driven state machine. So here we go. Okay, so we have a queue based state machine here which uses application data and sends it around the individual states using shift registers. Those individual states are essentially methods. So we could use object oriented programming to convert those individual states or methods and the application data because after all a class is just a custom data type and the methods to that interact with that data. So let's create a couple of classes here. I'm going to create a counter class. I'm also going to create a standard class and a complex class. The counter class is going to be the abstract class which has initialized method and an increment method. The child classes of standard or complex can then override uh, the increment method. So that's what I'm doing on the board here. Now if you haven't seen my uh, YouTube series on object oriented programming, I'm going to link that below and also a talk I did at GDevCon about object oriented programming. So I highly recommend you watch those videos uh, before continuing on here because the actor framework is heavily object based. So now that we've created those classes, what we can do is delete that application data that's currently initializing our shift register and replace it with the concrete implementations. So the complex object or the standard object. Just to represent how the user could change between those two objects, I put in a simple select function here and a front panel control. So once we've wired all that up, we could change what we have in, those, in that case structure into different substates to the methods. So what we're doing here is deleting the increment innards of that state and putting in our method. And depending on which class the user chose, so complex or standard, a different implementation uh, may be used. So we'll change it for initialize and for increment. Thinking along the same lines of 
different data types causing different functions to execute, let's have a look at our messaging system. In our queue, when we output data, we want a different case in our case structure to execute. Now to me, that's a lot like an object causing a dynamic dispatch VI to change implementation. So why don't we create a message class? And if we have a top level message class that has a dynamic dispatch do function, then child classes could override that do function or that do method. Now, if you want a method to also input some data, like you have with the queue we have on the board here, where we have a command and data, well, the command, that can be the child implementation of a class, and the data could be the private data of that class. So you can see that we can have the same structure as a normal message, and we can use dynamic dispatch instead of using a case structure with lots of different cases. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these message classes. So the message, message class itself, we can see has a do vi, and the inputs of this do vi are the message class, and also the class of what I'm going to now call our actor, because our actor or our process is called counter. And if we look at the block diagram, you can see it doesn't do anything because it's an abstract class. But now if we look at one of the child overrides of do, in this case increment, we can see that again we have the message input, we have counter in, and counter is the name of our actor. And see here we have our dynamic dispatch VI that we created earlier in the counter class. So we can see that in the project window here. So we can still drag that over, it's the same VI. So dependent on the different type of counter we have going in, whether it's standard or advanced, this VI will change implementation as we can see in the choose implementation window. Okay, now that we've created all of these message classes, let's see how we can put those into our queue driven state machine, which is quickly becoming an actor as we know it in the actor framework. Okay, so now that we've created our uh, messaging systems, let's just delete that case structure. We no longer need it because we're using dynamic dispatch to change functionality. We can also remove the uh, case structure here that I was using for error handling. Now let's also remove the data type going into obtain queue because the data type of this queue is now the message object itself. So we'll wire that over and also to enqueue a message we can click and drag over a message object. In this case it's the initialize.lv class object. So we can wire that to the enqueue here. The next thing I'm going to do is wire is um, drag across the do method. So the do method, I'm going to connect to our actor, which is the counter. And I'm also going to wire it to the uh, DQ data, which is our object, it's our message object. So dependent on that object, the do method is going to change functionality. Now, let's just uh, neaten that up a bit, and we're mostly there. Okay, so I've neatened up our new actor core that we derived from the queue-based state machine, and I've changed it so it matches closely to the actor core that we see in the actor framework. So, the only thing I've done is to change the object wire appearance, so I've got the blue for the actor and the purple for the message. I've also added in some case structures for error handling. So we have a case structure around the do method, for our messages and we have an error handling uh, section as well. So if we compare this to the actor core that we see in the actor framework, you can see that they're very similar. In fact, the only differences are that in the one I derived today, we didn't implement a, a handle error VI. Now the handle error VI would sit inside here 
but in Actor Framework, the Handle Error VI, if we look inside, uh, simply looks at all of the errors, and if there is an error, then it stops the actor. And the other thing that we didn't implement was stop. Now stop in Active Framework is this VI here, and inside this VI we have a stop core, which is a dynamic dispatch VI, which you can choose to override. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful to really work out how the actor core actually works.